Howdy folks, how are we doing? Um, I hope everybody's well. Um, if you haven't been here before, I'm Simone. This video is just going to be mostly sewing chat and a little bit of my life. Um, mostly just an excuse as to why I wasn't here last week. But anyway, if that's what you enjoy, stay tuned. I have um, fabric that I bought, I have patterns, and I have made absolutely nothing. I haven't seen you for two weeks. I have, I've been busy. It's, there's, there's life stuff going on. All right, where do I start? Um, yes, I have a whole lot of plans for videos that will happen. Um, hopefully. At the moment, there's, yeah, live stuff. Live stuff is happening. I have picked up a new client for my business. Um, so I'm doing some patterning work for um, Australian brand One Fell Swoop. I'll show you some photos of the stuff that they do. It's really amazing, like, um, in terms of patterning. It's a lot of fun. They do draped patterning, so it's fascinating to me because I'm a flat pattern maker. Um, fundamentally um, and they've asked me to convert some of their patterns into jersey patterns really and just make some little changes and pattern making stuff like that um, obviously it will be a long time before that gets released to the public um, but yeah if when it does if anything goes through I'll show it to you, but yeah, for now it's quite fascinating work. I'm enjoying it. Obviously, Rebecca and Bodil, the launch is coming up, and that's still um, firing. Uh, we did a photo shoot yesterday with the WA Ballet. Uh, I mean, the brand now has an Instagram presence, so I can tell you that it's Bodil. Um, and I think there's a splash page on the website now, ready for the launch. Um, but none of the real product photos have been made public yet, so I don't think I can make them public here. I've got some great behind the scenes footage of the ballet dancers from the shoot yesterday. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until it's available anywhere else before, because it's just, it's not, it's just not proper, it's not professional to show you anything that I might be working on before it's released for the brand. As much as I might want to. <laughs> uh, what else has been going on? Um, so yeah, like the business has been quite busy, but also my um, mother's partner, Cliff, who's a lovely man, uh, but he has got type two, di type two diabetes, and he has been very, very ill recently. Uh, he's now in a wheelchair, so he can't drive anymore. He also runs his own business, so. Um, this last couple of weeks have been trying to figure out how we're going to deal with that. The fact that um, they live in a house that's full of stairs, so obviously he can't get around. Um, and, you know, if anybody was wondering, if you've never experienced dealing with somebody in a wheelchair before, those things are lethal weapons. <laughs> I mean, only because it's like, well, okay. I don't drive. I can drive. I have a driver's license, but I prefer not to drive and I don't have a car. Um, driving gives me terrible anxiety. Uh, but because somebody needs to be helping drive Cliff around so that you know he has some level of independence and his business can keep functioning, they live very, very close to me. Um, my mum has a very high level job, so she doesn't have all the time in the world as much as she um, has been offering way too much time I think this is you know this is hard um I've got Cliff's car now to drive him around so the level of adrenaline that is rushing through my veins from my anxiety kind of 24 7 this last you know week and a half has been a bit full-on and I don't have this problem really with anything else it's just this full-on flight or fight response of, I mean, even thinking about it, my hands are starting to shake. Like, I do not like driving. And I've been going with, like, this last sort of week is like, I just have to get over it. I'll keep doing it until I get over it. But I just don't, I don't think that's going to work. Don't, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Anyway, lethal weapons, wheelchairs. Um, getting the wheelchair in and out of the back of the car. I mean, like, all the bits move. 
<laughs> I have got, actually I don't think I can show you, but I have got a very large bruise on my inside calf from picking up this wheelchair. They have now, yesterday, just bought a lightweight wheelchair, so not the one that they send you home from the hospital with, um, which should make our lives much easier. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that you need to sort of organise, ramps and access and... <sighs> I'm tired. Let's talk about sewing stuff. I've had no time to make anything. Uh, I do totally intend on doing the boxy top plan that I had last time. So teaching you how to draft a boxy top and then lots and lots of different ways that you can hack it. And I have started on it, but I don't think I don't think my head's in the right place. It just, just was it, it wasn't working. <laughs> it just wasn't working. I didn't like the pattern as it came out. It felt too big. And then I was like, I'll just make it in some, um, this pattern in just some scrap fabric and see what it looks like. And I was like, I don't like it in this fabric. It's like, that's not the point. The point wasn't to like it in this fabric. It's a scrap fabric just to see if it works. But yeah, my head's not in it. My head's not in it. But isn't it amazing? When you're really, really busy and you can't get any time to sew, you still manage to buy a lot of fabric. And I bought a whole lot of patterns as well. So I've got vintage patterns to show you. Um, all right, fabric. Let's get off all that life stuff, it's boring. Uh, one day I will be able to make myself something. This, is, this is, isn't me made, this top, it's bought. Um, it's like 34 degrees today. I wish I knew what that was in Fahrenheit. Um, if 40 degrees is 100 Fahrenheit, would 34 be 80-ish? I'll put it down here, the what's right, because I feel like I'm way off. I'm not very good at that game. Yeah, so I actually do need some kind of jersey summer tops. Uh, I went through my wardrobe. I have been doing a bit of spring cleaning AKA taking stuff to the salvos to get rid of it. Um, because now that I have a housemate, I have kind of noticed that I have a lot of stuff. Two people's stuff in the one house is now a lot of stuff. So I've just been donating some things. Um, good things, like uh, I'm hoping that yeah, the charity stores can make some money off me and my inability to have any time to actually sell it for myself. Fabric, let's talk about fabric. Last delay over. Uh, so the top two that I bought, I thrifted. Um, so yeah, taking stuff to the salvos, I went in and had a look at some stuff and bought some things. There was a couple of um, secondhand stores in the area or um, op shops, thrift shops, whatever you want to call them. And then this lot is from, I don't know if you can see that, it's from Pit Trading. Uh, that Pit Trading did like a 25% off everything sale. And so I had to, I had to. Uh, so, the first thing I got from the thrift store was just this little uh, rib jersey. And it's got like a pontial kind of um, effect on it. Um, normally I probably wouldn't buy pink like for clothes, but I mean this sort of dusty pink is quite a good colour for me. Um, and yeah, for just a little singlet or a top or something, I think that'll be really pretty. Um, I think that cost me like $3, something like that. Um, this one, um, cotton, it's, I'd say, a batik print from Indonesia. Uh, I think it'll make a really cute little, um, like, sarong style skirt or shorts. Like I showed you in my plans video for my, um, module. I really want to have that module finished by the end of the month, which is the deadline. The, um, work from home sewing module. But... It's only, it's only in a couple of days now, really. I just, <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. I do have a lot of work on and other stuff to do. And, and right now, quite frankly, I would really like to just go back to bed. Anyway. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, the little wrap skirt or the little sarong wrap shorts or something like that. Um, it does have this border print on it. Um which I think is really cute. And the next one's got a border print on it as well. And my main problem with border prints is that then I'm like, I have to use it. I have to use the border print. I can't just use the main fabric. What am I gonna do with it? 
I have to find something with a square edge to use the border. Which, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's that one. Um, I got that, thrifted that from Anglicare, I think. And I think it was only a couple of dollars. I can't remember how much. Um, right, so pit trading. Again, another border print. Oh, I didn't bring my iPad with my how, what things are on it. It's some kind of viscose, I think. It's got a little bit of stretch, I think. Oh yeah, a little bit like um, like a woven stretch. Am I making that up in my head? Oh yeah, it's more give than it is a stretch. I'm making that up in my head. But it's a navy with this white print. Um, and then, yeah, it's got a border edge. I think it'll make a lovely summery thing. I haven't decided what, though. I always think I never have any of these drapey sort of fabrics in my stash. Maybe only one or two. And then I have a hard time deciding what I will use them for. Although I've decided, like, with, like, the boutique and, um... These sorts of prints, these really kind of earthy, more... I know this kind of looks like a wax print as well. It's got a really organic quality. Um, but I actually like the idea of making them into things that have got more of that structured... Well, not structured, more tailored, retro-y kind of look. As opposed to something like this that you would normally see. Like here in, in WA where... Everybody once upon a time used to holiday in Indonesia and the, the holiday clothes that you buy in Indonesia, you know, that are tailored to white people are like big and drapey and oversized, like elastic waist pants with harem crutches and um, singlet dresses with gathering and masses and masses of volume. Um, I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look more stru my, tailored, structured. Um, formal? No. Just not so loose. Something more fitted. That's what I'm trying to say. I'd like it to be something more fitted. Um, so, yeah. I'll decide on that one. Uh, the next thing I got was just this organic cotton jersey in white, which is always a good thing for the stash. Um, I, in summer, I really love white. Half my, I, yeah, as I said, I organise my wardrobe. Half my wardrobe is for summer is white or pale whites. And I then need to have a lot of them because I tend to drop stuff on them and then they're in soaking for a week. Because <laughs> it's covered in food. Um, but even like for linings and stuff, um, or to make a little jersey slip dress to go under things for linings, I think that's a great thing to have in stash. It's really, really soft, really beautiful. If anything's left of these, I will link them below from Pit Trading. This I think is one of my favorite things. Um, it is a polyester knit, which is unfortunate. I really would have preferred it to be um, like a cotton or something, but it really does feel that really soft. It doesn't feel synthetic-y, um, but I love this print. Isn't that good? So this will be my little summer t-shirt for me, I think. I mean, I could do a wanted tee um, with my the fuller sleeves, or I could do like a crew neck or a boat neck. I've got patterns for both of those at the moment. Anyway, or a cow. Maybe it'll make a cute cow. Like I said, more structured. A cow isn't really structured, is it? Anyway, that's that one. And then there are two Bengalines. Pit Trading quite often has a lot of Bengaline on the website, and it's a really, really good price. Um, I kind of got over Bengaline because there was a point in the 2000s um, and I was living in Sydney and you suddenly started to see a lot of reproduction vintage on the market. That's when it like really took off. You could get heaps of reproduction vintage clothes and a lot of them were made in Bengaline. So you would get that 1950s sort of shape, but in a stretchier um, fit. And I kind of really got over that. I mean, particularly because it would be a little bit shiny and it wouldn't feel very nice, even though you can get these fantastic prints. Um, and yeah, it's got like quite a bit of stretch. Um, but then I saw these two prints 
on the pitch trading website and I was like, oh, I just really like those. I <laughs> really like those. Um, I think, like, so I've got this sort of tropical number. Yeah, it's kind of tropical. And then this really orangey red um, leopard print. I'm really fussy about my leopard prints and this one I really like. Like, I like it to be a certain way. I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, and yes, as, as I've said in other videos, I do need like some bottoms and stuff. So for summer kind of capri pants, but I'm really thinking that one of these has to be the full um, jumpsuit from the, from Gertie's Charm Patterns Jane set. Um, do you think that that look very, very summery? Strapless, fitted, capri pants, jumpsuit. Anyway, yes, if you thinking about buying the Bengaline from Pit Trading, I mean, I don't know if they're all the same, but these two are very similar feeling. It's really nice. Like, it's a really nice Bengaline. Like, it's not shiny, and it's really soft. And it's not super, super thick either. And the stretch in it is, like, really, like, good recovery. Um, yeah. Ha really happy with those two. So that's, yeah, this. Oh, the thing I hate about doing these videos is the fact that I have to then go and fold all this fabric back up again afterwards. <laughs> so that it will fit. I really hit maximum fabric. So, so yeah, that one. I know, it's like a bird of paradise, almost. Hmm, anyway. And that's the leopard print. Ta-da! Yeah. I mean, obviously it's got quite a bit of structure. Like, Bengaline's not a drapey fabric. But, yeah, for fitted, tailored things, which is why it was, I guess, so popular for reproducing... 50s kind of looks and it's kind of what I'm going to be using it for now so I'm living in my 2000 self okay patterns I was really thrilled to find that there were a whole bunch because I haven't seen since kind of COVID really I haven't seen the op shops selling paper patterns anymore like they just suddenly completely disappeared or maybe it was because there was just this massive interest in finding things to do at home that everybody went out and bought them or that nobody was getting rid of them or people were taking them from their grandmothers instead of donating them. I don't, I, I really don't know. But they just completely dried up. Um, or I kind of think at, at my local Anglicare, which these guys all came from, they come, they, somebody goes through, and I'm pretty sure they check if all the pieces are in there, and then they wrap them in plastic so that you can't get into them. And I'm pretty sure that might be a team of, um, of volunteers, which might be some lovely mature ladies. <laughs> it's little old ladies checking patterns and wrapping them up for Anglicare as volunteers, which I think is really gorgeous. Um, anyway, let's go through what I got. Uh, and maybe I should inch forward a little bit so that you can see them better. So that I don't have to take photos of everything um, and insert it because I don't want to do that much editing today and I said I really kind of want to have a nap and then I want to um, go online for um, tonight is Sunday night is Shan from Kittenish Behaviours doing her live thing that she does on Sunday nights which might be Sunday morning somewhere else but anyway um, and then while she's doing that, I'll try and make myself a t-shirt or two, hopefully, um, rather than be editing this forever. But all right. So the first one is McCall's 5609, which is a dress in two lengths and then a little jackety wrap over the top, um, from 1977. Um, I hope that comes up clear because it's actually slightly a bit of a, a ratty packet. But yeah, I was thrilled to find that they had some stuff in my size. Sleeveless dress has extended shoulder line, scoop neck, back zipper, and neck binding. Cover up has neck binding, extensions tied in front, sleeves cut, sorry, it's really, really, 
how to, okay, there's a bit missing, with front and back and uh, open at underarm. So it's like a cape? I know it doesn't look like a cape, it looks like it's got sleeves. Anyway, that's really cute. I've already actually taken out the dress pattern on this and had a look at it, and it's cut at a size 18. But sadly enough, it looks like it might actually be an okay size for me. So maybe a vintage size 18 is not what I would think. Bust 40, waist 32. That's a little oversized, but still not much. All right, see so that one? This one's actually my favorite. Should I save it till last? Yeah, all right, I'll save it till last. Last. Um, this is not very exciting. I've actually got a heap of these in my um, pattern stash already, but it's just um, high-waisted tailored pants. This looks early 80s. How good am I? 1982. Getting good. Um, yeah, but I just love the even just that illustration of those red pants. It's so good. Um, McCall's 8195 from 1982 pants. A, B, and C have insert pockets, front zipper, and waistband. A and B have front pleats. And so that would presume that C is flat fronted. Each view comes with two leg widths. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. So it's a tailored leg and then a straight leg. Great. Um, the next one is really cute. It's maybe my, probably my second favorite. This is very easy Vogue. Um, suitable for knits. I think you could make it in anything, I guess. Uh, no date. I think the ones that are Australian, because this one says, yeah, Vogue Pattern Service, Sydney, Australia. I don't know if they ever put the dates on them. I always struggle finding it. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting kind of 70s vibes, but I mean, it could even be 90s. <laughs> anyway, it's this little square neck pinafore with a frill around the bottom. Obviously, this is a style that comes and goes all the time. Um, yeah, it's been, yeah, super popular again. Um, I just think that's really cute. And it would be super easy. So yeah, it's just a square neck, two little darts, and a frill around the bottom. And like it's even got like the picture of the pattern pieces. Look how simple it is, three pattern pieces. Um, obviously there's no facing or anything, so I'm not gonna, I don't know how the neckline and armholes are finished, but I'm not gonna bind them, because ew, not my, not my deal. Good luck for you if it is your deal. It's not my deal. Um, I mean, it does look so nice when it's done. If it's done well, I'm just don't doing it. Alrighty. This is Vogue Americana Carol Horn. Dress and jacket. Dress in two lengths. Um, I'm here for the dress, really. The jacket. Yeah. Very 70s. I'd say very 70s. Where do we have... Because this is an American one, all original American Vogue, uh, with printed in Australia written on it. Carol Horn brings a fresh contemporary approach to American fashion. Her interest is in the present. Revivals bore her. A definite trendsetter who creates a taste level that individualists love, I think. <laughs> Yeah, again, no date. Ah, uh, boring. Anyway, so yeah, dress and jacket. I just liked all the panelling in the dress. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, but it's like a centre front piece that comes up. Yeah, so the centre front piece comes up to form the straps and also give it princess lines while panel pieces come down the sides. Um, I just thought that was interesting. In terms of pattern making, I actually don't know if I'll ever make it. I don't know if it would suit me. Very, very round. And then this bit cuts in where... Mm. Anyway. And I mean, check out her turban. Fabulous. 
and they really look like they're gossiping. Look at his face. Seriously. <laughs> All right. Okay, so then there was two, um, uh, where were these from? Good Sammies, I think. Good Sammies. Um, more modern patterns. Um, from Simplicity. No date. Oh, no, it's on here. Oh, don't have my glasses on. That's really tiny. 2004. 2004. Sim uh, new look. Why did it say Simplicity? Oh, I'd Maybe simplicity in yeah. Anyway, new look six three eight one, and it's a swimsuit, a robe, a bag, pants, a kind of wrap over top, which is basically the robe without the sleeves on shorter, and some little shorties. But I actually thought that the cut on the swimsuit was quite cute. I mean, I have a hundred leotard patterns. I just for some reason really wanted to look at this one and it was only a dollar so I did um, yeah and then this one which is a nice sort of uh, this is simplicity 2917 from mm -hmm, 2008 um, just a princess sleeve a princess seamed dress um it's also got like a puff sleeve version um interesting sort of neckline that it's not really my style to be honest um sort of pseudo sweetheart it's almost a sweetheart um but yeah sort of fit and flare and a top and pencil skirt uh I don't actually, I mean, I thought this was a good basis for a um, princess lined fit and flare dress if I ever needed a ready made pattern for a princess lined fit and flare. And then I can just change the sleeves and the neckline to what I want. Um, yeah. And then my favourite, last thing, this vintage number, style 1086 which is a strappy pinch front dress. I just think that's really cute. I mean, I'm not really here for the jacket, but that dress. Um, junior petite and Mrs. Dress in two lengths and bolero. Mmm, what's the bet that this is not the right size for me? <laughs> Uh, it says 14, bust 36. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, date, 1975. So it's a year older than I am. Cute though. I like, that's the back, which the straps come over to little buttons. I don't think I would do that. I would just sew them in. But still, it's a cute detail. Yay! So... That's really all I've got for this week. Um, I hope you guys are having a great week and hopefully I get back on track with some stuff that I've made and um, get some of those other videos that I've talked about made. I don't know if that's gonna be soon, guys. Um, I mean, you know, I could hope, but we'll see. We'll see how life goes. Um, but anyway, it's lovely to have a chat and just talk sewing stuff. Um, if you can think of uh, some ideas for these things please let me know I'm always open for ideas ideas for my fabric and um, fabric if any of these actually I didn't even try to match any of these new patterns with this new fabric did I <laughs> if you have ideas tell me all right thank you so much if you enjoy these videos you know do the YouTube stuff like subscribe comment I like the comments I mean, more subscribers is always fun. There's not many of you, but thank you. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, yeah, catch you on the flip side. <laughs> See ya.